Okay, it's on. It's on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. All right. We're going. Hi, Vinny and Skip here again. Hi. Uh... All right. Now we're back to the movie collection. Now there is one that we forgot to do last time. He, for you forgot to do. Yes, I forgot to do. Fine. I forgot to do it. I'm sorry. I misunderstood. I thought I skipped it, but I didn't. You did skip it. All right. Whatever. <clears throat> So, we're going to take care of the one that I missed on the last video, and this time, we're going to go through... What are we going through? Oh, for God's sake. All right, we're going through L through P. L through P this time. All right, great. L through P. Let's get on with it. The Great Mouse Detective. One of the last films before the Disney Renaissance, The Great Mouse Detective shows you where they were going to go eventually with a great performance by Vincent Price as Professor Radigan. You should watch this one, and I'm sorry I forgot to mention it in the last video. Labyrinth. The better of the two cult classic Jim Henson movies, the other one being The Dark Crystal, Labyrinth is a musical extravaganza and a fantasy classic. You should watch it. The Lady Killers. The only Coen Brothers movie that I actually own, The Lady Killers is a fun little heist movie starring Tom Hanks and a bunch of other malcontents, including J.K. Simmons, in one of the strangest but funniest movies you'll ever see. Land of the Lost. One of the few Will Ferrell movies I can actually stand. Land of the Lost is weird and bizarre, and it actually complements Will Ferrell's comic sensibilities really good. A nice little update of the classic Sid and Marty Croft Saturday morning TV series. Last Action Hero. A meta-commentary on action movies in the 80s and 90s. Last Action Hero wasn't a hit when it came out, but it's starting to get some more respect. You should watch it if you haven't seen it. Besides, Charles Dance as Benedict is one of the best villain performances you'll ever see. The Last of Sheila. One of the few film mysteries that actually plays fair. It's a great movie with a great cast. You should watch it. It's enjoyable. If you want to know more, check out the Who Done It Hall episode on it elsewhere on this channel. The Lego Movie. Taking the tropes of a standard adventure story and turning it on its head into an interesting little twist in the third act, The Lego Movie proves to be more than just a 90-minute toy commercial. The Lethal Weapon series. Let's be honest, Mel Gibson is a racist bastard. But... These movies are actually still pretty good, even if you can if you can get past that. One and two are great action pieces. Three's okay. Four, well, that's a little iffy on whether or not you feel about it. But, uh, yeah, four's okay. Little Shop of Horrors. You should see the director's cut. Now, it lasts a little bit too long for my taste, and you can see why audiences originally didn't like it back in 1986. But the Blu-ray gives you both endings, so you can pick and choose at your leisure. Looney Tunes, back in action. Fox Space Jam, this is the better live action animated hybrid Looney Tunes movie. The Machine Girl, a Jap an ultra violent Japanese exploitation flick with one of the best premises ever. A girl's brother gets killed by the mafia and he ends she ends up getting her arm cut off and replaces it with a Gatling gun. Go with it, it's great. Machete. One of the only actual films we got out of the trailers back in the theatrical cut of Grindhouse, Machete, has a lot of pointed satire about American-Mexican relations and uh, immigration and all that stuff, a lot wrapped in a over-the-top, ultra-violent fiasco starring Danny Trejo. Watch it. It's fun. Mad Max Fury Road. Okay, so I'm not as enamored with this one as everyone else is, but it is a very good movie and you deserve to see it for the sheer filmmaking artistry on it. Yeah. Iron Man. The first Marvel movie, and it's pretty good. It still holds up pretty well. Robert Downey Jr. was a brilliant casting decision, in spite of all the naysaying when it was first announced. The Incredible Hulk. All right, this one's kind of the weakest of the Phase 1 Marvel films, but that's only because they hadn't really sorted everything out yet. Edward Norton's a credible Bruce Banner, but, eh, you can take this one or leave it. Iron Man 2. All right, admittedly, much like everyone else, I consider this one of the weaker films in Phase 1 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but uh, I don't think it's nearly as bad as everybody says. Thor. Again, kind of a weird one, just because of the way it is, but hey, Kenneth Branagh does some great direction, and we get Chris Hemsworth and Anthony Perkins, so yeah, it's a good one. Captain America, The First Avenger. This remains my favorite Marvel movie to date. Chris Evans is Captain America. You should watch it if you haven't already. The Avengers. Who doesn't like The Avengers? Yeah, it's a lot, a lot of Joss Whedonisms, but hey, honestly, this one's a pretty good movie and it's a fun, fun time too. Iron Man 3. A lot of people didn't like this one, and I can't figure out why. It's a great action movie, and yeah, and the twist with the Mandarin is really, really good. Ben Kingsley's hilarious when it's revealed. Also, Grindhouse-style credits. Awesome. 
Thor The Dark World. Pretty much the weakest of the Phase 2 Marvel films. Eh, you can watch it and not. It really doesn't hurt anything other than figuring out where one of the Infinity Stones come from. Captain America The Winter Soldier. Not as good as the first Avenger, but in a kind of weird 70s spy thriller kind of way, this one's really, really interesting. You should check it out. Guardians of the Galaxy. Freaking love it. Great movie. You should watch it. Even on its own, it would be a great movie regardless of whether it was Marvel or not. The Avengers Age of Ultron. Okay, again, a weak film in the franchise. The weakest of the Avengers movies by far. But hey, James Spader spadering it up all over the place is Ultron. It's worth watching just for that alone. The Mask and Son of the Mask. The Mask is good. It still holds up pretty well, being very, very 90s, but uh, Son of the Mask, don't waste your time. Masters of the Universe. Yes, it's cheap. Yes, it's stupid. Yes, it's one of the worst movies you'll ever see in an adaptation of an 80s cartoon ever. But it's got Frank Langella as the best Skeletor ever committed to film. And, uh, oh, Meg Foster. Ah, <sighs> Meg Foster. Step on you. Men in Black. So far, the only good Men in Black movie. They should have stopped right here. Mission Impossible. Starting with the TV series as a springboard to go beyond, become its own thing, the original Mission Impossible remains one of Brian De Palma's best action movies. Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Mortal Kombat's okay for what it is. Mortal Kombat Annihilation, oh my god. Mr. Holmes. An interesting character piece about an elderly Sherlock Holmes and the difference between fiction and reality. There's three mysteries going on all at once here, and the movie juggles all three of them brilliantly. The Muppet Movie. The first movie to prove that yes, you can take puppets into the real world, and yes, you can have people interact with them, and yes, with a little ingenuity, you can make it all work. The Great Muppet Caper. You know you were right, this is kind of meta. Shut up and just talk about the movie. Okay, okay. The Great Muppet Caper is my favorite Muppet movie, and it's a great heist movie on top of everything else. Fun songs, fun gags, you should watch this one. The Muppets Take Manhattan. Okay, this one, this one's still pretty good and still holds up pretty well, but it is kind of the weakest of these early Muppet films. Muppets from Space. I respect Muppets from Space for what it was trying to do. It's the first Muppet movie where Kermit the Frog is not the main character, instead putting the focus on Gonzo. Sadly, it didn't really work, and it was definitely one of the more floundering acts following the two Disney movies that they produced with them. It's a very Merry Muppet Christmas movie. TV movie from NBC starring the Muppets doing a riff on It's a Wonderful Life. It's okay, but boy does it get weird and dark during the segment where Kermit didn't exist. Murder on the Orient Express, 1974. I enjoy this one a little bit more than the Kenneth Branagh version that came out. It's a classic Agatha Christie mystery, and everything's like a lot of these movies. They have uh, a really good cast, and you should uh, watch this one. My Little Pony Equestria Girls. Ugh, look, I ain't into the pony thing, all right, but basically, these are mostly Skip's movies here, but uh, I've, I've glanced at him while he was watching them, and this one's okay. My Little Pony Equestria Girls Rainbow Rocks. It's the best of the Equestria Girls movies that started things off. This one changes the whole focus of the franchise in ways that nobody was really expecting, but it made it stand out as its own thing. My Little Pony Equestria Girls Friendship Games. I guess this is kind of where this whole Equestria Girls thing started coming into its own. It's all right. My Little Pony Equestria Girls Legend of Everfree. This one's okay. It's not the best of these movies, but uh, it's pretty solid nonetheless. My Little Pony Equestria Girls Magical Movie Night. All right, this is three TV specials all put together. The story's okay. They've got a loose arc between them. Again, like most of the Equestria Girls stuff, not my thing, but if you're into the pony stuff, not bad. My Little Pony The Movie 2017. Now, a lot of bronies got overly excited and started claiming this was going to save 2D animation, and it didn't do that great at the box office, but Hasbro was happy with it. And overall, it's still a pretty good movie, and you should check it out. If you're into ponies, that is. Are you getting annoyed by this yet? Woo! 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 Get on! Okay! Mystery Men, an underrated superhero movie from the 90s. This one has a bunch of great actors and comedy people put into it to create a lovely little spoof of the superhero genre. Nancy Drew, a charming little adaptation from the early 2000s of Nancy Drew. This one features Nancy solving an old Hollywood murder case, and it's uh, got that lovely little 
girl detective thing going for it that people seem to like so much. The never-ending story. A true 80s classic. The fact that it's a German co-production gives it a lot of European sensibilities in terms of production design, and it's just a gorgeous film to watch. Nice Guys. A period piece from Shane Black, director of, writer and director of a lot of great action movies, including the Lethal Weapon series and Iron Man 3. You should check this one out. It's funny, it's got a lot of action, and it's a great story to boot. Nightmare on Elm Street, one through four. All four of these are really, really good. The first one's scary as hell. The second one does a lot of interesting things to follow up on it. Three brings things back full circle with Nancy Thompson. And four, four is just fun for how weird it is. Nightmare on Elm Street 5, Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, Wes Craven's New Nightmare, and Freddy vs. Jason. Five tries to take things back to its darker horror roots and uh, almost succeeds. Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, Ugh. well, we all know how that turned out. Wes Craven's New Nightmare is a horror classic and really does a lot of meta things which really, really works, setting the stage for what he would later do with Scream. And Freddy vs. Jason is a monster mashup that's a lot of fun, even if it doesn't make any goddamn sense whatsoever. Now you see me. A heist movie with magicians? I'm in. That's all you need to know. Oceans 11 through 13 and Oceans 11 1960. Oceans 11 1960 is a great Rat Pack movie, but it has its usual hamperings with things that were going on in movie production code at the time. Ocean's Eleven 2001 is a great start to the franchise and a fun little heist movie. Ocean's 12 shows you how to do meta in completely the wrong way, so it's boring and painful to watch rather than entertaining. And Ocean's 13 gets the whole thing back on track with a really amusing revenge con. Ocean's 8. An all-girl version of the Ocean's Eleven franchise. Honestly, you wouldn't think this one works, but it does. The perfect score. An interesting take on the heist movie, wherein the target is not a lot of money, but the scans is to the SAT. This has an early appearance by Chris Evans and Scarlett Johansson pre-Marvel, and you should check it out if you have any interest in any of their early work. The Phantasm series. Phantasms 1, 1 and 2 are really creepy, uh, surreal horror films. 3, 4, and 5, eh, not so much in being hamstrung by being low-budget productions, but by God is Angus Scrim fantastic as the Doll Man. The Pink Panther series. Alright, we're not going to talk about these, to be quite honest with you, because there's an expansive series of videos already on this channel covering it, and we largely agree with that guy. You want to know what we think of him? Go watch that series. Give him the views. Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest. We own this one and not the others because we both agree that the darker story here being at play is the best one of the three films. Yes, I said three. There is no fourth and fifth film. At all. The Princess and the Frog. I love this movie. It's a lot of fun. It didn't save 2D animation, but at least they gave it a shot and gave us an entertaining movie out of it as well. Prom Night 1980. The original Prom Night is an unusual sort of slasher film, you know, but it did give us Jamie Lee Curtis and Leslie Nielsen in the same movie. That, yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis and Leslie Nielsen. You should watch it just for that. Hello, Mary Lou, Prom Night 2. Hello, Mary Lou is one of the best horror movies you'll ever see that you've never heard of. There's some great effects, some really good scares, some fantastic kills, and Mary Lou Maloney really deserves to be acknowledged as one of the great slasher, female slashers of our time. Prom Night 2008. All right, so this one isn't exactly a remake since every Prom Night movie kind of stands alone with the exception of two and three. So, this one, yeah, it's okay, but it's kind of just sort of a stalker kind of killer thing, and mm, it's all right. Some good kills, but uh, fairly borderline post-scream slasher type stuff. So there you have it, L through P, with an additional backtrack to G for a minute. Moron. Hey, don't, don't be, be nice. Be nice. Have you met me? <sighs> Whatever, frustrating. All right, so next time we're gonna do, and I'm looking this time. Fine, you look this time. Jeez. All right, let's see. What are we doing? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Next time we're gonna finish everything off by going through Q through the end. Q through Y. Y? Yes, Y. No, 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 no. I'm asking why are we doing Q through Y? Because we don't own anything with Z. Well, that's a good reason. Yeah, it is. You're gonna end this thing? Well, I don't know you to end this thing. All right, let's I just turn it off, turn it off, turn it off!